Now hold it right there, young lady. Let me see what you got on. Oscar, haven't you embarrassed her enough? Oh, no, I'm just getting started. Our little girl is becoming a young lady. What no? Well, you know, what, what's great about, you know, our show anyway is that is that we we're all you know welcoming right like the tone that we set you at any given point in time in this world you will meet every you know type of person that walks you know that walks our planet right and that's the fun of it because it's nothing like seeing you know yourself on tv as a kid growing up it was like I, all the tv shows that i loved i never really saw myself you know, represent it as much as I wanted to play in the playground of the Flintstones or, you know, fly, you know, one of those little scooters in the Jetsons, <laughs> I wasn't going to be able to see myself do that. So representation in this medium is important. And Ralph and I right away, we huddled, we, we were like, you know, it's important that we include everybody in this because that's what true diversity and inclusion is all about. So now when we introduce all of our new characters, you know, Maya, who's played by Kiki Palmer, and and uh, uh kg who's played by artist a boogie with the hoodie you know it's like let's talk about their parents so we wanted to to have them be adopted to you know uh, uh, a same-sex couple so um and we didn't want to make that a very special episode you know because michael's in our universe and we wanted to heavily lean into the michael collins character um, uh, and the way we hinted the very first time around was like, yeah, he's gay, but we can't say that he's gay, but we're giving you all the indications that this character is uh, under the LGBTQ umbrella. We bring them back this time louder and prouder as the, as the title. We deliver on that premise. So, you know, we really bring in Michael Collins with a bang. So Michael's the one character and, you know, in animation, you see characters all the way as they you know, dressed in the same outfit every episode, right? I challenge you to find Michael in the same outfit in any of the episodes that he's in, you know, that Michael's in in, in, in any of the episodes that you see. That was important for us. And that's why casting E.J. Johnson was important to inform the character. He has to own that character when he's in the booth recording, you know, and shaping that character, because that's the ownership that we give our actors. So the same thing with Billy Porter and Zachary Quinto, when we cast them, they were shaping the characters. They were telling us, informing us who these characters are in the booth. And it was important to give a diaspora, just like we give a diaspora of blackness in our show. We want to give a diaspora of the LGBTQ community as well. It's not going to be just that one character that has to be all things LGBTQ, right? That it makes sense to us making the show that we have many representations because we're not one monolithic you know, being, and that, that stands for any part of the, of the spectrum of what you see in Proud Family. That's what we're most proud of. No. I told you, Penny, no dating before you're married. Mama, make Oscar stop. <laughs> Why's my grandbaby dressed like Doc Vader? To keep the boys away like you did during the Crusades. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. It means a lot because... I was extremely surprised when I got the phone call that we got rebooted. And the fact that we're re rebooted to a whole new generation is very meaningful because I genuinely believe they needed us. Like, I think the babies missed out on the love that we were able to give mm -hmm. those generations, the, the kids of the 90s. Like, we, there's so many kids we raised that were able to glean a positive image of themselves by watching us on such a conglomerate like Disney. Mm -hmm. Disney Channel took a gamble and we were the first black African-American um, family to be represented in cartoon on the Disney Channel in history. So, and it paid off. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I genuinely believe that it is going to continue to, I want us to be like the Flintstones or the Simpsons because <laughs> continue to grow and continue to take another generation under our wings and give them that pride that the proud family. Yeah. And we've also, we've also included, you know, the, the, the rainbow, the rainbow revolution, you know, and, and no rainbow is, is complete unless everybody's included, you know? And so with inclusion, we really mean it, you know? We really mean inclusion. So we have that balance in our show where no one's left out. No one's left out as being human, 
No one's left out as being normal. You see? So we start from, we start our vertebrae from, a, from, a, from family values, which include all values, you see? And so that in that, the proud family, we are proud. Penny's gonna wind up living with us forever, like you and Bobby, mama. <laughs> Shut up, boy, before I hurt you. What do you think you're doing now? Little ah! sister, don't you worry. Dad at 10 o'clock. was made to You think I'm gonna let you dance with a boy, looking like a, like a... Like a girl? I now have a son. I have a kid myself. When I originally did the Proud Family, I was in my 20s. So I, I really didn't know what it meant to be a mother. But now for this reboot, I, I have a 13 year old, ironically, and I know what it means. And it's brought a whole new level of appreciation and awareness to Trudy. Um, Trudy and Oscar have always been down with the black and the brown. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you missed it the, the first time, our best friends and next door neighbors were Latino. Um, and so, you know, it was always beautiful to have um, La Cienega. Um, uh -huh, Boulevardes. Yes, <laughs> and, and right next door and representing the black and the brown from day one, we always have. So I'm sorry you missed it because we were we were really repping back in the 90s. Like, it's a beautiful thing. But I'll, but I'll catch you up. I'll catch you up on it real quick. Habla mente ti, cuéntame de tu vida. Sabes tu bien, el neto repentida. Sé que tú no puedes, aquí intente, culvame. Uno y otra vez, siempre volverás. Okay. You wouldn't be related to a Oscar Proud, would you? Yep, that's my day. Oh! Damn it. Well, I, it's funny you should mention that. You know, I've done a lot of shows, uh, and I often tell people, I said, you know, uh, Proud Family seems more grounded than the live action shows I, I've done. And uh, and it's exactly for the reasons uh, uh, you just uh, iterated. You know, you with, anim with animation, you can get into moments uh, 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 and beats that you're lucky to get in live action, but in animation because Bruce and his team can zero in on the emotion of the moment. It ultimately has a, a you know to, after watching an episode of The Proud Family, you you're totally taken in. I mean, it's the magic of animation. It brings you, it brings you in the suspension of uh, of disbelief, if you will. You go into that world. And uh, uh, and it takes you on that trip that live action can't take you on, and that that it, at least I mean live, get, some live action can, but animation is especially good at taking you on this emotional uh, 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 flight of fancy and 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 bringing you to a, a, a resolve at the end. And so that's I, I love it. So every people identify with proud family. I have to remind people they're not real people. So uh, <laughs> folks talk about it like it's real because they relate to it completely.